Hi, I'm David Wiedenfell. Well, spring is over. For so many of our bird species, the end of spring means the nesting season is ending. Their lives shift gears again as they wind up their breeding activities and start readying themselves for the next big things. As July wears on into August, they finish feeding their last nestlings and fledglings and begin to do other things. You will notice that this is the time of year when the birds begin to get quiet. All spring, the dawn chorus of bird songs was very loud and persistent. It's a wonderful time of the year to hear bird songs. But as we move into the hot days of July and August, the birds will become much quieter, maybe singing only a short time in the early morning and being silent in the afternoon. In mid-July, the woods can be very quiet on a 90 degree afternoon. The birds aren't gone, they just don't have anything to say. Although some of our songbirds will keep nesting into July, only a few will actually start a new nest this late, and most breeding activities still going on a result of nests started in June. That doesn't mean that bird parental duties are over. Even fledglings that are as big as their parents will still need attention and feeding from the parents. Into early August, we often still see young cardinals around our feeder begging to be fed by mom and dad. By the way, you can tell a cardinal is one of this year's young because its bill will still be a dark color, almost blackish, and its plumage looks like a female cardinal. This is what they look like. In September and October, the young birds' bills will turn red, like the adults, and the young males will begin to get their red plumage. As it starts to come in, they'll be pretty splotchy, with red patches among the basic brown feathers. By winter, it will be hard to tell the first-year birds from the older ones. Molting is important to birds. Feathers wear out. They wear down and break and become weaker, and they need to be replaced. It takes a lot of resources to grow an entire new set of feathers, including flight feathers and body feathers, so they usually wait until after nesting season to do their molt. Depending on the species, some begin molting in July, although it reaches its maximum usually in August. For larger birds that you see flying overhead, like crows, hawks, and vultures, you'll notice that they have lost some wing feathers. You can see gaps in their wings where flight feathers are missing. The gaps are usually symmetrical in both wings because they lose matching wing feathers on each side, so they aren't unbalanced. A bird that lost several wing feathers in one wing and not in the other wouldn't be able to fly. The feathers, of course, grow back in, in sequence, so in a few weeks all of them will be new and fresh. The birds molt and grow fresh feathers for their whole body, too, not just the wing and tail feathers. This is easy to see on birds like cardinals that we can get a good look at up close, but all birds are doing it. You'll notice that they may look splotchy as feathers are shed but haven't yet grown back. Cardinals lose their crests. They can look really funny without it. Sometimes you'll notice they lose most of the feathers on their head at the same time and will look like they have very dark lines or maybe even the entire head is dark. That's the pin feathers growing back in. Pin feathers are almost black when they're growing, but once they emerge completely, they'll be brightly colored like before. Molting is also important to our migratory birds so that they have strong, complete feathers when they begin their southward journey. Most of our migratory birds migrate in September and October, but some have already started migrating in July, like Louisiana water thrush, a bird that nests here in places like the Riverside Preserve and Crockett Park, but really spends about eight months of the year on its wintering grounds in Central America. Also, some shorebirds have started migrating. 
All of the migratory birds are now starting to prepare for their migration. The non-migratory resident birds are also getting ready, but in their case, it's for winter. Molting into fresh plumage is part of that. As the nesting season winds down, birds also begin loosening up. Most of our birds are very territorial when they're nesting. They set up territories that they proclaim loudly by singing and fighting off other males. Once the young are out of the nest, though, they don't have to defend their territory so much, and they begin moving around a bit more. Young birds and migrants begin moving about no longer restricted to territories. So you can begin to see birds in your yard that you may not have seen there all summer because they were busy on a territory somewhere else nearby and not free to go just anywhere. You may begin to see migrants from other areas even as the summer wears on and turns to fall. July and the next months are times of change as the little birds grow up and everyone starts preparing for the rest of the year, either fall and winter or migration season. The season is changing and the birds are moving on with their changes. The ones who are traveling will be back next spring and the others will be around. So get on out to see them and appreciate the birds. Good birding.